Hey guys, what's going on? This is Dr. Matt Winning at winningstrength.com. I'm up here in Toronto, Canada, getting ready to speak at the Swiss Conference. Yesterday, I tried to post a video about my first time at Westside Barbell, and for some reason, the video didn't have any volume. So I thought I would do the video over again for you guys on YouTube, which I appreciate you guys following. So, <clears throat> flashback to 1999. I had just finished my first world championships as a teenager, bench pressing close to 500, squatting close to 700, and being one of the top lifters in the country as a teen lifter. I met the Arnold Classic in Columbus, Ohio, which was a three-hour drive from my house. Um, unbeknownst to me, that's where Westside Barbell was. And as I'm walking through the Arnold Classic, um, George Halbert is on the main stage bench pressing 766 pounds, at 220 body weight, which was totally amazing. And one of my friends at the time, Brad Schuert, was like, you need to go and talk to Louis Simmons and start to see if you can go train with him. You're not gonna get any better. Being in Indiana, where you're from, you've maxed out all of our guys' knowledge and potential. And if you wanna be the best in the world, you need to go and talk to Louis. So I get the nerve up when they're walking out to go to their cars after the bench press bash. And I approach him at the um, at the walkout area right outside of the main expo hall. And I'm like, hey, Louie, my name's Matt. You know, um, I live over in Indiana. I just broke or just won world championships as a teenager. And he's like, oh, cool, what's your numbers? And I told him my bench and my squat and my total. And uh, he's like, yeah, yeah, that sounds pretty good. He goes, um, come over and train with us sometime. So I'm thinking, oh, this is awesome, right? So about two or three weeks later, I get the er, I get the, the balls to drive over, and um, it wasn't anything like what I had thought, right? Like I had known these guys were pretty hardcore, but um, I make it over there, and, you know, I got three hours to be anxious about it. And I show up at the gym 45 minutes early because – I'm not exactly sure where it is, and this is long before um, MapQuest or if you had a phone for navigation, you know, uh, cars and things didn't have navigation like they do now. So um, I wanted to make sure that if there was a traffic jam or I got lost, I was, I was going to be there on time, which it's funny. Most people don't do that these days. You know, they just show up late. And this is a place you would not want to show up late to. Initially, I had a hard time finding it because um, there was no signs. The windows were painted black. It was in the middle of a small strip mall in a really bad side of town. And so I'm wondering if I'm in the right place. Well, next 15, 20 minutes, other guys start showing up that look like big lifters. And I'm like, okay, I'm at the right place. And um, I walk in and it's literally the size of a, a large hotel room. It's like four or five, maybe 600, maybe square feet. There is fucking shit everywhere. Dumbbells all over the floor. Nothing's organized. It looks like stuff hadn't been cleaned and shit. Who knows how long. Blood was all over the floor in front of the monolift from people's nose cracking open and around the deadlift platform from people's shins bleeding. And it just stayed there as like a badge of honor. And I had showed up on a day that was a bench press day. And I kind of remember it like it was yesterday. And they're doing like some heavy, um, heavy pressing work. And I work up to something that's equivalent to about a 500 pound bench, which was my strength. And I'm pretty excited because, you know, I'm a teenager and feel like I've impressed some of these guys and they don't have any kind of a look on their face. And the only remark I get is George Albert comes up to me and grabs the back of my arm, like right here. and was like, your triceps are fucking garbage. And I was like, wow, you know, like. I was kind of like just bent away at, at not, no good job, no, oh, that's awesome, no, wow, this kid's strong. It was like, this dude's it's dude's triceps fucking suck. And so at first I'm a little bit upset about it, but after about another 20 minutes or so, um, we get done lifting and Louie and I and maybe Dave Tate were still hanging out at the gym. And I asked uh, Louie, I go, hey, you know, George said my triceps need more work. What do I need to do? So it shows me this tricep rollback exercise. It's pretty common today, but we were pausing it on the ground and then straightening it up, laying on the floor. And uh, 
the other another guy there named Tilt, he was about a six foot two, 450 pound black guy was there and we were doing these rollbacks and it became a competition. Louis like, try to, hey Tilt, beat Matt on these and show him how to do them right with some real weights. So we started at 30s, then we moved to 40s, then we moved to 50s, then we go to 60s, then we go to 70s. By the time it's all said and done, we stop at 90 pound dumbbells and I do about 14 and Tilt does about 11. So I beat him. Nothing really was said at the time. I think Louie and I go and eat lunch. And then I'm on my way back home to Indiana. A couple of weeks go by and I come back to train. And as we start working out, I notice that there is no tilt. There's no other, there's no guy that I just beat with triceps. I don't think anything of it because I'm so anxious to train there that I don't really say anything. And then we get done working out. And I'm like, hey, Louie, where's that? Where's the guy that I beat on the tricep extensions a couple weeks ago? He goes, we kicked him the fuck out of here. I'm like, you kicked him out? You know, thinking like, what did he do? You know, he get caught stealing another car. Did he, did he do something criminal? You beat him and you're an outsider and you came into the gym and you beat him on a lift and we don't take that here. Wow. Like that was pretty wild, right? And that was kind of one of those unspoken rules at Westside Barbell is if you were an outsider and you came in and one of the guys at the gym that was a member wasn't putting in the work or was willing to get beat by an outsider, a lot of times would get kicked out. And so I think there's this special aura around training at Westside Barbell and how special it, it, it seems like to normal people. And no, no doubt it was special for all of us. But I think that they don't realize that that specialness came with a cost. It came with a cost of you are going to give 100% every time you walk into that gym. And um, although it sounds like, yeah, you know, that would be really cool. Um, do, it, do it for six months a year and find out how much stress it really puts on you to perform on a consistent basis I always tell people the biggest advantage to me training at Westside Barbell was meets, competitions were easy compared to the training. Um, the training was hard. It was rough. It was beat down beyond belief. Normal people would not be able to survive what we did um, as far as the training and the volume and the intensity, um, the technical capacity, you know, I, and I get frustrated with this on a consistent basis. Um, you know, I'll teach people how to move properly. And if Louie or Chuck or George showed you a technical, you know, uh, move on a squat, a deadlift or a bench, you were expected to not be retaught that again, meaning you better pay attention and you better make sure that it's ingrained immediately. And for a lot of people, they couldn't do that, you know, because sometimes changing technique takes time, patience two things of which were never available at Westside Barbell. So although I think that, you know, um, that type of gym probably doesn't exist anymore. Um, and it was a special time for a lot of us, like myself and Greg Panora and Chuck Vogelpool and other guys of that nature. Um, the average person wouldn't have been able to survive at that place. And I think that I needed that at that time in my life to be a champion, to understand what kind of discipline it was going to take to be a champion. You know, at Westside Barbell in that time, there was no Christmas off. There was no birthdays off. There was no weddings off. And I think that people don't understand the intensity level that was required of you on a daily basis. And that's why it's interesting you know, with that last podcast that I did with Dave Tate. So if you haven't watched it, go watch it. I think it's called Injury per Injury Prevention or something. But I just did it less than like three weeks ago. And people gave me a bunch of hell for missing my brother's wedding for training. I was prepping for a world record. And since 19 years old, since this time I'm telling you about this video, that was the amount of uh, persistence that was put into me to be a great lifter. So hopefully you guys here at Swiss, I'll be presenting here in uh, about an hour. 
two times, and then I'm going to close at 5 o'clock. So if you guys are in the Toronto area, I think they will still let you come in and register for a really good price. And I'm doing a seminar tomorrow, November 3rd at Fortis. And I think we still have one spot left. So if you want to come and learn some technical stuff like what I learned from Louie and Chuck, shit, 25 years ago, come on by and let's do it. So talk to you guys soon. And thank you for your support on Winnie Strength and winningstrength.com.